Angels Journal Life. Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal, my name is Kai Watson. In today's video we're going to look at both Conor Barron and Mohamed Diamandi. We're going to look at them individually, then can I look at their partnership and see what they offer at the base of the midfield. I don't think the Diamandi in the 10 experiment really worked against Celtic. I don't know if it was anything against him in particular, but I also think it highlighted that Dujon Sterling is not a central midfielder. He does add a lot of energy in there, a lot of graft, effort, a bit of steel. But when it comes to the actual technical side of the game, he can't create anything. He's not a brilliant passer. He didn't really drive forward with the ball in the middle. I just don't think he really gave us what fans were looking for. It was a midfield that I wanted to see. Exactly what I wanted to see was Barron and Sterling deep with Diamandi a bit further forward, but I really don't think it worked. I don't know if it was just because it was against Celtic or if it's just a general thing that can work. I really don't think that Dujon Sterling's answer for central midfield. Maybe for right back, again he gives you pace, energy and power, could be good there but I just don't think he should be considered as an option in the middle anymore after that game. Again, no players played well but it was just kind of really highlighted the flaws that he has and the weaknesses and it's the technical stuff that you really need in the middle of the park to be able to control the game especially when you're going to weigh Parkhead. So in lieu of that, I've looked at Baron and Diamandi to see if they can be the answer going forward so like I say we're going to look at them individually, kind of compare them and see how they complement each other. So, let's get started. We'll start off by looking at Connor Barron. So, four league appearances this season, 91.8% pass accuracy, 81.2% long ball accuracy, 0.76 chances created per 90, 33.3% dribble success per 90, dispossessed 0.76 times per 90, just over the one interception per 90, 4.08 recoveries, 40% duels won. I actually thought the defensive numbers would be a bit better, particularly the recoveries and Jules one. He always seems to be in the right area when it comes to picking up the ball. And I really didn't think the Jules one would be as low as 40%. But again, it shows you what he offers in the really high pass accuracy, the high long ball accuracy. The dribble success kind of highlights some of his flaws. He's not always the best at beating a man and driving forward. They can drive forward into space and then pass the ball off. But if you're asking him to beat a man, it's not really, not really his game. It's more using his ability on the ball to kind of get the passes through those lines, get the play, the play spread and open the game up. It's what he's really good at and that's why I'm not sure the number six row was 100% the best for him. I think he's more that kind of box to box eight. He doesn't really offer as much going forward, which is why he maybe gets used as a six. It's a, it's a really interesting one. I don't really know the best position for Connor Banks. A lot of people would say he has a number six when he gets those kind of defensive numbers. He puts the tackles in, he wins the ball back, he goes deep drops between the centre backs, which is something that John Lundstrom obviously get heavily criticised for last season. But when Barron does it, he tends to grab the ball off the centre backs and then drive forward instead of just becoming a third centre back. I do think it's really difficult to pigeonhole the best position for him or where's best to use him. Like I say, his biggest strengths are probably his passing ability and that tenacity to win the ball back. So it's really difficult to say where the best position or what the best role for him is. But he's probably been Rangers' best player so far this season. It's hard to criticise Barron. I do think, like most of the team, wasn't his best day against Celtic, obviously. He didn't really manage to impose himself on the game. Didn't really get stuck in probably as much as we would have liked and kind of imposed himself on the Celtic midfield. But none of the team did, so it's hard to criticise him for that. It'll be interesting going forward to see Again, if it is the Baron Diamandi partnership with Bayrami coming in, if he's going to move into the 10, I doubt we're going to see Diamandi move forward and someone else moved into that position. But like I say, it'll be interesting to see what Clement does going forward. Now moving on to Mohamed Diamandi's numbers. So four appearances, three from the start. He obviously come on at half time against Ross County. One assist, 82.3% pass accuracy, just under one chance created per 90. 66.7% dribble success, dispossessed 2.29 times per 90, 0.33 interceptions per 90, 4.25 recoveries, 50% duels won. was quite surprising to see the recoveries and duel numbers higher than Connor Barron's. Interception numbers are obviously a lot lower. He obviously get dispossessed a lot more because he does dribble so much with the ball. He does try and drive past opponents and get the ball forward and turn his man. But you can see the dribble success is also a lot higher as well. Uh, pretty much double what Barron had and he's almost creating one chance per 90 he already has the assist as well he's definitely the creative force deeper in midfield which is I think why myself and a lot of other fans thought you should try him at the 10 see if he can create there but I think he just kind of got lost in the game he likes to receive the ball deep again he loves to thread those balls through the line he likes to drive forward with it and create that space and open up the pitch which is what he's so good at 
and I think playing him in the 10 takes it away from him. So I don't think, personally, I would try him at the 10 again. I think you do need to have him deep next to a probably more defensive midfielder that will do more of the dirty work he does. Like to get stuck in, he is quite aggressive, which leads to him getting a lot of bookings, which kind of done him against Celtic. He couldn't be as aggressive in the tackles and kind of those duels because he picked up that really silly yellow card for reacting against Alistair Johnson. So it kind of stifled his game a bit and he couldn't impose himself as much as he probably would have liked. So I think it's it's an interesting partnership just now. So we'll kind of move on and look at how they compare, what they do together and if they can complement each other going forward. So the first thing this slide shows is both of their heat maps and it's probably no surprise that Connor Barnes got a lot of the kind of darker red everywhere. So the darker red obviously signifies where they spend most time on the pitch. So Barons is a bit more widespread, but a bit more dialed back. As you can see, there's not much in kind of the final third when you look at Diamandis. He even spends some time out at left wing, right wing. You can see more of the spots inside the box, which you don't really see with Barons. He doesn't get as far forward as that. The interesting one about Diamandis as well is normally when they start in lineup, said he seems to start on the right in that right position, whereas his biggest hot spots are in the left-hand side of that centre circle going forward. So it just shows where he likes to pick up positions. That's where he likes to pick up the ball. He likes to drive forward, get into the opposition's half, start creating, even get a shot off himself. That's where I think he's best at, and which is why when you play him at the number 10, he drops too deep and there's that gap in the midfield. So it's an interesting one. Obviously, Barron, even some time in the full-back positions, you can see there, he does like to cover when either Hefty or... Tav goes forward, he does like to drop into those positions, which is what Ryan Jack done so well. I think it was one of Ryan Jack's biggest strengths, actually, and Connor Barron's come in and managed to do the same thing. It shows an intelligence and just an ability to be a team player and not be the one that always needs to get the glory. The fact that you're willing to fill in for those more attacking options, because let's face it, at the end of the day, Barron's not the best kind of attacking threat. He's got a really good shot from distance. He's technically a good player, but he's not going to be that player that crashes the box and gets 5-10 to 10 goals a season. It's just not his game, whereas Diamandi can do that, and Barron lets him do that, which is why I think it works in a sense, but I still think potentially you need a bigger, stronger, more physical, better ball winner in there, but I don't know if that means dropping Barron or if it means dropping Diamandi if you eventually do get that player. We obviously don't have that player just now. It's what a lot of fans wanted when just to bring in that number six defensive ball winner, but we don't have that. I think if you do have that, you maybe risk having to drop Baron or Diamandi, which in terms of player development, in terms of a player trade model, you want both of those players to develop. So does that mean you stick with this partnership and hope that it works out and it comes it comes good? We obviously didn't get to see it against Celtic. Maybe it would have worked, maybe it would have been different. But myself, like I said, and a lot of fans wanted Dujon Sterling in there, but I think that game, not because he was the worst player on the pitch, it just really highlighted the weaknesses that he has in his game going forward and the ability to kind of take a game by the scruff of the neck. So the fact that he can't do that, I think, should end the do John Sale in the centre mid experiment and maybe get him more used at right back and be able to rotate Tav, like have him as a rotation option. Central midfield, they can also rotate at centre back as well. Really good squad option, but... I don't think he's anywhere near been able to be a starting central midfielder for Rangers, especially in those big games. Also, the radar next to the heat maps taken directly from Sofa Score. You can see kind of the players' radars and what the strengths are and how they're listed there. So the green is Connor Barron and the blue is Mohamed Diamandi. So I think it kind of tells you exactly what you see with your eyes. So Mohamed Diamandi is rated higher in attack in attacking sense, technically and also creatively, whereas Barron's rated higher defensively and tactically. I think you can kind of see that. Like Connor Barron's a really disciplined player. He doesn't get caught out of position very often. He knows where to be. Obviously, defensively, he's a better option as well, whereas Mohamed Diamandi's that bigger attacking threat. Technically, probably a better player. I think Barron might be a better passer of the ball. Obviously, Diamandi's a bit more risky in his passes, but Diamandi's definitely better controlling the ball, driving forward, beating a man. So that probably gives him the edge technically and creatively as well. I think Diamandi's kind of far above the player that Conor Barn is when it comes to being able to be in that creative role or be in that 10 role and create chances. So I think the radar makes sense is exactly what you see and I think it does show that they can complement each other really well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I think it is a really interesting 
conversation, like what is the best midfield partnership that Rangers could have just now? Does Raskin come in? He obviously came on at Parkhead and he looked bright, he looked sharp, he got stuck in. But that, I think Nico Raskin does that. I think he's out for a wee while and then we see him in appearances off the bench. He has that tenacity. He's just really dogged and gets stuck in and then he starts a few games. Either doesn't perform that well or he gets injured. I hope he can get a good running team. I do think there is a player in Nico Raskin. But I don't know who you'd drop then. Do you drop Diamandi and lose that attacking threat and go with two more tenacious midfielders to try and control the game? Or do you drop Connor Barr and you lose a lot of that energy that he brings? And he's probably been Rangers' best player this season. I think it would be hard to drop him. But what do you think the answer is? What would you be... If the manager sticks with the four two three one formation, who would be your two? What is the perfect partnership in your eyes? Like I say, just now I'd probably stick with Diamandi and Connor Barr and I like how they complement each other. I like what they bring to the game. It's just two completely different play styles. One really tenacious, dogged ball winner. And then the player that's capable of taking the ball forward, creating chances and also getting goals himself. But like I said, please leave down in the comments what you think is the best option, so I'd love to hear it. If you have enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.